For 16 years, Leah Bracknell was involved in some of Emmerdale's most iconic storylines as the much-loved Zoe Tate. But off-screen, she was facing her own battle after being diagnosed with terminal lung cancer. In 2017, Leah came on this show and showed us her bravery during this incredibly tough time. They're telling you, we can't do anything, we can't operate, we can't give you radiation, we could give you six rounds of palliative chemo, and I'm thinking, OK, OK, what, what do I do now with this information? I can't yeah. change the diagnosis, mm -hmm. but I can... <clears throat> I, what I can do is choose how I respond. Okay, and I'm going to choose to make my decisions positive ones. I'm going to mm. choose to embrace life. I'm going to choose to be thankful that I have life. I, I might not have had life. I yeah. might not have... And then suddenly, all those things you used to worry about, I you know, just go... Yeah. I don't wake up every morning feeling fearful. I wake up feeling grateful, feeling happy, feeling excited. Yeah. Well, sadly, a year ago this month, Leah Bracknell lost her life, but her memory lives on, and today we're joined by her widower, Jess Hughes. It was the anniversary at the weekend, uh, Jess, so how, how are you feeling? Um, <laughs> I'm emotional. Uh, as you might imagine, it's um, yeah, it's it's been an, a year last week, and and obviously hearing Ali there is um, is um, profoundly emotional and uh, profoundly intense, um, and also amazing amounts of pride, and that's why I, I want to come on here really is to is to repeat that message that she had and, and, and to talk about that message, which I think in, it's so strong and I don't want that message to kind of fade away because it was so strong, she was so strong and I know she affected so many people and uh, she, in, in such a positive way, how she uplifted people. And I think in the circumstances kind of the world's finding itself in now with, the, with a lot of fear around and, and, and the virus and the lockdown, that, that message is more important than ever, really, of how we, how we choose to um, react to these kind of traumatic events in our life. And, uh, and Ali reacted in, in such a profoundly uplifting, beautiful way um, and also with strength, with such strength. Um, so even though I'm talking about her in the past tense, the, uh, her spirit is uh, as alive now as ever. And, that, and that's what I think is the most important thing, her spirit, yes. her message, her, her voice. Yes, I wanted to ask you, I mean, also to point out that you call her Ali, of course, because that was her name and Leah was her on-screen name, but, um, or her yeah. act acting name. People say that grief is a process, you know, that there are various stages to it. W would you agree with that in terms of your journey? Yeah, I mean, grief is like a... Grief is like a, a kind of monster or a, a person who comes in your house and, uh, and after the first day or, or in the first months and weeks, that person's in your house all the time and they bring along... A lot of their kind of mates, like anger and uh, fear and, uh, and um, uh, deep sorrow and pain. And it is like I've been physically assaulted every single day almost. And um, um, But it does kind of, it does change over time. And, and uh, the, the places in between the grief get longer, if you like. Uh, and then things become back to normal in a way, and you find yourself laughing, smiling, and uh, and and living life again, which obviously brings up other stuff like guilt. And um, but then, so the, the, it does stretch out. But then, when it does come back in moments like, it can just hit you suddenly. You can be kind of completely normal, and then suddenly it hits you, and it's. In some ways, that's harder because you're going back to something that you got used to almost. You got every single day was like that, but over time, you you go back to a sense of normality. So when you're sucked back into the grief, it does become um, almost harder because you're 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 living, and then it's like, oh, I've got to come back here. But then, it, I think grief is about uh, is about finding. Um, Beauty in, in, in life is life can be completely cruel, and, and life cancer is very cruel. What happened is death is very cruel, but she, she it's was... about 
So, Being on a grief journey is trying to find the beauty within that and, and find something that, and until that beauty transforms the grief into something. And that's, and that's I think, what Ali did with the whole facing cancer. She could have faced it in so many different ways, but she found incredible beauty and, and, and laughter and love and in, in, in yeah. some really well, devastating say, situations. Looking and back often, at that... I was going to say, sorry to interrupt, looking back at that clip, I was astonished by how positive she was. I might not have had life. Yeah, and that was real. I mean, that wasn't kind of put on for the telly or anything. The how, that was how she approached cancer. That's how she approached the diagnosis. The amount of times we were told there's nothing that they can do and kind of we had to go through the whole kind of uh, journey of that. And then again, and every time we faced or she faced that wall, though, she expanded. She became this this person who just looked, I mean, incredible bravery, the bravery to look mortality in the face and, and exp instead of shrinking to that, actually expand. And, uh, and that was, and, and cho make choices to uh, uh, rise above, because uh, things like cancer diagnosis, they, they become so heavy, and she wrote so eloquently about this, um, that they become a defining, they define people, and she, didn't, she never wanted that. She wanted to be defined by her responses, not by the diagnosis. It's not by uh, the treatment or how long she lived for. And I think she, and that was right till the end. That was her approach. And that is extraordinarily potent and powerful and inspiring to see someone who expands when they, they could easily and no one um, uh, judge them at all for contracting. And she, she was incredible. She never moaned about the cancer. She never said, why me? I mean, she might about Jez. other stuff in life, but we, yeah. Jez, sorry, it's Carol here. You, you've been watching her old episodes of Emmerdale, haven't you? Even though that was before your time. Yeah, I mean, yeah. When I Does kind it of, help you? It's, it helps me connect, yeah. And it helps me... I mean, I, that's before I knew her, but obviously it meant so much to her and I, I heard so much about that period of her life. And, and yes, it connects me to her spirit and to, and, and to something that's... Uh, I think when cancer comes into people's lives, it can become so dominant and everything becomes about the cancer. But actually, we had a long relationship before cancer and, and she had a long life that was before cancer. So it's, 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 it feels really important to connect to that part part of her, that, that kind of uh, youthful, outward looking and, and, and just from my own sense of, and, and just, yeah, be, and there's moments, if it's an emotional scene in, in, in the programme, I know those emotions, I know those, I know her face in that place and so that touches something deep inside of me and it reminds me, yeah. Jez, both yourself and Leah, you practised uh, shamanism. Can you just explain for everyone at home what that actually involves, what that means, and how that helps you? It's... It means... Shamanism is the oldest uh, um, religion, or it's not even a religion, but spiritual practice on the planet. It's been practised possibly for 50,000 years. It's what we grew up with as humans. And uh, the viewpoint is, is that everything is made of spirit and there's not only just this world, there's many other different worlds. And the shaman is there to explore other worlds. So, of course, in terms of me having this experience and... Uh, I feel like our relationship, my relationship with Ali now, it moves on to another level. She's in a different world and uh, it's a bit further away. I mean, we always had a... At the beginning, we had a distant relationship because she lived in North Yorkshire, I lived in down south. But now it's more distant. But that doesn't mean to say death isn't a, um, a defining end, if you like. It means a transition. And, and so our relationship moves on to a different level now. And I'm... Well in intensely grateful for that, that I've got something where I, I, I understand and I experience that, the, that we do move on from, to different realms and to different lives in different places. So and, that helps And, um, Jez, you, you're actually um, you're going to be keeping, um, hoping to keep her legacy alive by, by publishing a book. 
she had started to write about her diagnosis. Um, so we so look forward to that. And um, thank you so, so yeah. much for joining us today. And we're, we're all thinking about you. Thank you so much, Jez. Thank you. Thank and you. And thank you. If you've been affected by anything we've spoken about with Jez, there are helplines, support, and information available on our website.